back, friends and frenemies, to another episode of Manga Transdub Theater, where we take public domain Japanese comics, English-size them, and then... Make for the noise! I'm your host, translator, sound engineer, director, and surly little man, Nicholas Tyson. Today we have the first episode in a little seven-part mini-series of Shochan Adventures. Uh, many thanks go out to the good people at the National Diet Library of Japan, who digitized this volume not only in full color, but also at high resolution, which is appreciated when you're making a video. Uh, its title is... Shouchan no sono go, or Shouchan thereafter. You could also read it as, I guess, the rest of Shouchan, which is a reference to the fact that uh, these chapters were published well after the six collected volumes of um, 1924 and 1925. And also, unlike those volumes, we get not seven distinct stories, but seven chapters in one larger story um, in an album format that's not actually all that different from what you would see in um, Franco-Belgian comics, interestingly enough. Today we'll be tackling the first chapter, which introduces a new member to the gang, and his name just happens to be the title. Donkich. Who is this guy, you ask? Well, he's this dude right here. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Our companions have come to a forest where the acorns are already tumbling to the ground. Oh, what a nice breeze. Pretty nice. Not at all what I expected. A tiny old man was taking a midday nap beneath a massive oak tree. Hey, look over there. What? What? I should note that um, the little man here could also mean dwarf, but I'm going to translate it as little man. I don't know, because I'm weird. When, from out of a small hole in the side of the tree, a carpenter bee peeked out its head. Mm, there's somebody taking a nap right outside my hole. The bee climbed up onto the little man's belly, but he just kept on snoring, and loudly. What are you doing? You're like a freaking bellows out here. All the while, the bee kept yelling, Wake up! Wake up! as it stabbed the old man in the butt with its stinger. If you have to sleep, go somewhere else. Go on, get! But the little man seemed not to notice and just went right on snoring as he slept. <laughs> What the heck? I could cut off his head and he'd go right on sleeping. The bee gathered up his long white beard and gave the whole thing a good yank. If that's the way you're gonna be, I'll have to drag you down into my cellar. And so the bee took it upon itself to pull the old man into its hole. Alrighty then. The tiny old man woke up the moment something began to tug on his beard, and, planting himself on his own two feet, he cried out, What do you think you're doing? Hey, hey, who the heck are you? I, I was sleeping there so nice. Why you gotta wake me up? H hold on now, just hold on. But the bee was so irritated, it had no problem at all with dragging him right along. You talking to me? Hold your horses! Hold your horses! You're pulling out my whiskers! The old man was in such pain, his voice squeaked as he cried out. Squeak! Oh, it hurts! That's a bad squeak sound, I apologize for that. Up until now, our companions had been standing by the wayside, observing everything with great interest. Looks like things are about to get pretty heated. The old man seemed like he couldn't take much more, so Sho stepped in to break up the fight. How can you two fight like this, when the weather is so lovely? <laughs> I think Sho's missing the point here. <laughs> Sho only barely managed to separate the two, but he did at least get them to calm down somewhat. I'm sure each of you have your side of the story, so go ahead and tell me. The old man, show saved from torment, blinked his eyes and took a good look at him. 
The two of you are old enough. You should know better not to fight. It took a moment, but the tiny man finally came to his senses and gave a polite bow. <laughs> we thank you so much. Any more of that, and I think my head would have popped right off. He took a step back and asked our companions to follow him back to his home. Well, why don't you come see all I have left in the world? As they traveled upon the velvety surface of the fresh spring grass, before long there stood before them a crag with colors like those of a peacock feather. This is a build up to a very, you'll see. What a swell place! Geez, he may be small, but the little guy sure can't move. The old man stopped right at the rock face, thumped his hand on it, and where he did, an entrance appeared. Okay, now you, okay, so the text in the, the previous panel literally said, a pretty pattern like a peacock feather. That rock is brown. Maybe red-brown, but definitely not peacock-like. I don't understand. <sighs> okay, you're just gonna, <laughs> power of imagination, I guess. Man, you don't see something like this every day. It took a bit for the old man to come back out after heading inside. He must have gone inside to get something. Sure seems that way. He handed over a giant acorn that Sho tucked under his arm. Here, take, take this. Maybe it'll be of some use to you, he added, as he disappeared back inside. So long, then. He may have been a bit of a wush, but he seems like an okay fella. Squirrel and Sho headed back home with Acorn in tow. They placed it in the corner of their room, not really knowing what else to do with it. What on earth are we going to do with this thing? But in the meanwhile, they climbed into bed and went fast asleep. Squirrel woke up in the middle of the night and his stomach was growling. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's right. We never ate dinner. Squirrel was so ravenously hungry, he quietly snuck into the kitchen. I thought there was some mochi in here, but Shell must have ate it all. Unfortunately, no matter how many shelves he scoured, Squirrel found nothing to eat. Ain't nothing where there ought to be something. That's when Squirrel had a brilliant idea. He could eat the acorn they brought back earlier that day. Th that's right. Exactly, Squirrel. Thank you for confirming that for me. Squirrel went back to the room, hoping maybe there's a nut inside. Oh, it can't help but look so tasty. But in fact, the acorn was actually quite hard, and Squirrel's teeth couldn't quite cut through it. Man, this shell is pretty hard. So he went and got a hammer from out of the cupboard. Eh, this'll do, this'll do. Squirrel gathered up his strength and struck the acorn with a whack. The shell split open, and a little guy popped out, crying, Wee! <laughs> again, this is a dwarf again, but I, I don't know, I just prefer little guy. <laughs> Completely shocked, Squirrel ran off to wake up Sho. Sho-chan, Sho-chan, uh, uh, we got a problem. Sho got out of bed and pondered the mystery before them. Hmm, that's not something you see every day. <laughs> Sho asked the little person if he'd like to join them on their adventures. Oh, wow. <laughs> that old man must have given you to us to help out on our adventures. Relieved, <laughs> Squirrel gave the little guy the name Donkichi. Donkichi? I suppose any name will do. Woohoo! He can be my little brother! <laughs> And scene. Well, at least Squirrel didn't eat, eat the poor, poor fella. Anyway, that's our story for today. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really like this video, you can support my work on Patreon at uh, patreon.com forward slash it came from the manga. That's all one word. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links for which can be found in the description below. I'll be back hopefully in the near future with um, the second part of this little mini series. Um, but until then, do not let the man get you down. Bye. Thank you.